Hello and welcome to Triage, Rapid Legal Lessons for Busy Healthcare Professionals, a podcast created and produced by K&L Gates. Each episode is designed to highlight important developments in health law and analyze the impact on our clients and friends of the firm. We hope you enjoy this podcast. Hello, and welcome to this episode of Triage. My name is Macy Flincham, and I'm an attorney in the firm's Research Triangle Park office. My practice focuses on healthcare regulatory and transactional matters with a particular focus on the 340B drug pricing program and other pharmacy-related issues. And I am Victoria Hemshaw. I'm an associate in the firm's Washington, D.C. office, where my practice focuses on healthcare policy and regulatory matters. In this segment of Triage, we will provide an update on recent developments in the 340B program, and in particular, on recent guidance by the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, or CMS, on state strategies for avoiding duplicate discounts in Medicaid. On January 8th, CMS issued guidance for states on best practices to avoid billing manufacturers for rebates on drugs purchased through the 340B program. Specifically, the CMS guidance outlines strategies that states may consider in preventing duplicate discounts in Medicaid fee-for-service and Medicaid Managed Care Organization, or MCO, programs. Although the guidance largely lays out existing duplicate discount prevention strategies, it contains some recommendations that could greatly impact covered entities. By way of background, pharmaceutical manufacturers that want to participate in the Medicaid program and have their drugs reimbursed by state Medicaid agencies must participate in the Medicaid drug rebate program, which allows states to collect a rebate on drugs provided to Medicaid patients, as well as the 340B program, which requires manufacturers to sell covered drugs at a reduced price. The 340B statute prohibits what are commonly referred to as duplicate discounts, which occur when manufacturers are required to offer a 340B price and pay the state a rebate under the rebate program for the same drug. Although initially limited to Medicaid fee-for-service, the Affordable Care Act extended Medicaid drug rebate eligibility to certain Medicaid managed care covered outpatient drugs. And in turn, the prohibition on duplicate discounts was extended to drugs dispensed by MCOs. In recent years, stakeholders have voiced concerns that avoiding duplicate discounts has become more complex due to an increase in Medicaid managed care contracts and contract pharmacy arrangements. In light of the increasing complexities, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services Office of Inspector General, or OIG, released two reports encouraging CMS to provide guidance to states on ways to avoid duplicate discounts. As part of this guidance, CMS recommends that states refer to the Medicaid exclusion file, which contains a listing of covered entities that have opted to purchase drugs from the 340B program for Medicaid fee-for-service patients. CMS notes that states can exclude claims from such covered entities when they submit rebate requests. However, the file is limited to Medicaid fee-for-service and not arrangements with MCOs. CMS also recommends that covered entities, contract pharmacies, and state Medicaid agencies establish three-party arrangements to prevent duplicate discounts and report them to the Health Resources and Service Administration, HRSA. The CMS recommendation follows HRSA's prior guidance for contract pharmacy arrangements, which provides that covered entities may not dispense 340B drugs to fee-for-service beneficiaries through a contract pharmacy unless they have an agreement to prevent duplicate discounts. In addition, CMS recommends that states consider requiring the use of submission clarification codes and claims modifiers to identify 340B claims for purposes of their Medicaid rebate requests which could include an NCPDP Submission Clarification Code, the American National Standard Institute's Accredited Standards Committee, UD modifier, or a state-specific modifier, or billing modifiers for physician-administered drugs for dual-eligible beneficiaries. In this regard, it is important to note that such requirements vary widely by state and may also vary by settings and whether they pertain to retail, clinic-administered, or contract pharmacy drugs. Providers need to understand not only the requirements that apply to fee-for-service Medicaid, but also for each MCO in a given state. Most state Medicaid MCO programs offer multiple MCOs as an option to beneficiaries, each of which may issue 340B-specific requirements, which may differ from those in fee-for-service Medicaid. Of particular concern is CMS's note that states may use state plan amendments to regulate the ability of covered entities and or contract pharmacies to use 340B purchased drugs for Medicaid fee-for-service beneficiaries. By way of example, 
CMS notes that some states ask covered entities to report that they are using 340B drugs for Medicaid patients, which helps states confirm the information that the covered entity is reporting to the Medicaid exclusion file. However, CMS also notes that states may limit the ability of some or all covered entities and or contract pharmacies to use 340B drugs for Medicaid beneficiaries. In recognition of the complexities associated with Medicaid MCO programs, CMS further recommends that some states include in their managed care plan contract a provision that requires a managed care plan to exclude utilization data for drugs purchased through the 340B program from the reports of the managed care plan submitted to the state when states do not require submission of managed care drug claims data from the 340B covered entities directly. CMS notes that HERISA encourages covered entities to work with states to develop strategies to prevent duplicate discounts on drugs covered by Medicaid managed care plans. In addition, recognizing that there are no processing bank identification number and processor control un- number unique to Medicaid managed care plans, CMS recommends requiring Medicaid MCOs to use specific combinations unique to their Medicaid products to facilitate identification and removal of claims. Finally, CMS notes that states may also consider providing manufacturers with claims level data and drug rebate invoices to help ensure that there are no duplicate discounts in Medicaid. CMS notes that some states already provide claims level data to manufacturers through their invoicing vendor or a third party. The CMS guidance lays out several strategies for duplicate discount prevention. As states continue to implement these strategies in an ad hoc manner, operational and compliance challenges may arise for covered entities, particularly for those that are filling prescriptions for Medicaid beneficiaries in multiple states and with potentially differing requirements for identifying duplicate discounts. Of particular concern is the fact that some states may simply elect to exclude 340B drugs, whether in their entirety or solely as to contract pharmacies, from reimbursement under Medicaid fee-for-service or MCO, as has been done in some states already. Given the rapidly changing environment, covered entities should assess their compliance with applicable 340B requirements in each state in which they bill Medicaid, which should be done for each of the types of claims for which they or their contract pharmacy may bill, whether retail, clinic administered, or contract pharmacy. They should also review Medicaid MCO and commercial payer, participating provider, and participating pharmacy contracts, and associated provider manuals to see if additional requirements may apply. Thanks for listening to this episode of Triage on best practices for avoiding duplicate discounts in Medicaid. Please do not hesitate to contact us if you have any questions. Thanks again for listening to Triage, rapid legal lessons for busy healthcare professionals. New episodes are available for download through iTunes, Google Play, and other podcast applications. By subscribing to Triage, you will receive timely notifications of each new episode. Also, if you have any topics that you would like to hear discussed on Triage, please don't hesitate to email triagesupport at klgates.com. We would love to hear from you.